I'm going to Hosier. It's my first concert I've been to in about four years and I need to do some makeup. Let's do it together. Starting with the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip and Glow Primer. This is just going to ensure everything lasts really beautifully. I used to be such a concert person. I used to go to multiple in a year and I just fell out of practice, but I will get back into practice for Hosier. Here, I think we're going into the Chanel Le Beige Water Fresh Complexion Touch. Everything that I've been putting on my skin lately has been feeling a bit heavy, and this is my makeup fix for that feeling. I like to massage everything in with my hands, and then I'll go in with like a beauty sponge and blend the perimeters to make sure there are no harsh edges or lines. I love, 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 love the finish on the Waterfresh Complexion Touch, but most of the time I like a bit more coverage. Today, though, this feels perfect. Correcting the discoloration under the eyes. This Huda Beauty Corrector actually isn't the perfect tone for me. I think it's a little bit too pigmented. Once it's blended out, you can kind of see the pinky, peachy haze, which usually means it's a little bit too much for my complexion. However, I feel like if you can find the right tone for you, this is such a beautiful formula. Using the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Concealer on top, I love using a lighter complexion product all over the face and then going in with something with higher coverage right where I need it to get something that's naturally kind of flawless, but obviously not natural because we're still wearing makeup. Continuing to just Press everything in with a sponge. I'm going for a slightly lighter base because I know that if it gets hot and sweaty, as it often does at a concert, I'm not going to want to be wearing a full coverage base, sweating my ass off. I'm going to want to feel like my skin can breathe. Here comes the part where I actually have to make a decision about what colour I'm going for today. This is my like staple palette. It has some Glaminatrix Cosmetics shadows, some Half Magic, more Half Magic up here. This is my beloved Magic Brownie Cheek Fluff. I think I'm gonna start here because it just works so well with so many looks. I think the vibe is going to be smoky and more muted with a little bit of a gothic flip. I'm not dressing up a ton. I just wanna be comfortable. Pressman Atelier Face Trace Contour Stick in Biscuit. This doesn't change. See the finish of the skin up close? That's the vibe. That's what we're going for. Spray and set your face in that order. I've explained why I do this a bunch of times. Eventually it starts to feel a wee bit redundant to keep going on about it. And don't set directly over a super wet layer of setting spray sit there and wait for it to dry and your base will turn out flawless just trust me on this setting right through the center of the face but keeping the perimeters glowy otherwise that would defeat the purpose of popping on like a glowy base right this is the lisa eldritch form palette are we seeing the vibe when I say a smoky eye, I mean that the density of the pigment will be along the lash line and it'll be deepest there. So I'm going in with the darker brown from this palette and I'm just going to tap that onto the lid. Taking the lighter shade, it's a little bit warmer and I'm just going to buff that into the crease slightly above the socket because I have hooded eyes so if I fully relax my eyes I still want to see a little bit of the blend up here. This makes me a little bit nervous but I'm going to go in with the very deep like umbery almost black shade. I'm gonna smoke it out along the lash line. Let's cross our fingers. If we're not careful with this this could end up being too much very quickly. Whenever I do like a smokier eye, someone inevitably goes, oh, but this look ages you. It makes you look so much older. I'm like, it's black eyeshadow, babes. Bringing it back out with that slightly denser blending brush I started to look with. And we're getting smoke. 
Now I've been itching to use this Half Magic Shimmer for Yonks. Um, I just haven't had an occasion for it inexplicably, so we're doing it today. Look at her, I believe she's Wet Pebble. While I fluff out the edges of that shimmer, can I take a moment just to say how grateful I am for everyone who's followed and commented? I really wasn't sure how useful a long form kind of channel would be for me as someone who's only ever done short form content, but every single comment has been so lovely that it's really warmed the cockles of my heart. Take the matte browns we use to lay as a base for the shimmer, smoke them along the lower lash line. The more hazy and smoky the blend is, the more it'll hide the creases in your under eyes and you won't have to worry. That's why I love a smoky eye. I'll pop a little bit of wet pebble along the lower lash line as well, focusing it kind of beneath where the pupil is. I want a brown eyeliner in the waterline that isn't going to piss me off, so I'm going in with the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide-On Eye Pencil in Hustle. I think this is a perfect tonal match, and my big thing with these eye pencils is that they don't move. The thing that pisses me off is eyeliner that migrates when you so much as blink. It's a really small detail, but I do think picking an eyeliner that complements the overall eye look to put in the waterline and in the tight line really makes a look feel purposeful rather than thrown together. Half Magic Mascara. This is the only tube of mascara I have in my collection at the moment. I love it because it's a genuine tubing mascara and it genuinely does not budge. As someone with perpetually watery eyes, smudging, creasing, it's all happened to me in the past, she, she's not gonna move. Let me slap on my lashes. These are the Lash Bar Wavy Lashes. Lash Bar Lashes just slap on hooded eyes. I'm so sorry. For the brows, Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow Pomade to sketch in the tail end of my brow that I shaved off because it pointed directly downwards and I figured I could do better on my own. Then I'm just going over the top with a little bit of powder and kind of fading that in towards the head of the brow. And then I'm just going in with the Emco Beauty Brow Laminate. I'm not particularly fussy about my brow gels. This one is just accessible and functional. And I'm going back into the Fawn palette for an inner corner highlight. Because I need it. I always need an inner corner highlight, I fear. Add a little bit of complexity to the eye. I'm taking that same shade and just pressing it lightly on the ball of the eyelid. Yes. This is the Hourglass Evil Eye Ambient Light Palette. I'm taking this sort of coral blush and just dusting that over the cheeks. I'll use a little bit of the Luminous Light Setting Powder just to set the perimeters of the face so that when I let my hair down, it doesn't like stick to my base and piss me off. Half Magic Beam Trap Highlighter. If you have more of an olive undertone, be it fair or deeper, Greyish from MAC is going to pull a little bit more neutral because it has a green undertone. So I'm taking this and I'm going to line my lips and I think we're going to do a brown lip to keep everything really monochromatic. Actually I lied, we're not doing brown because I can't find the brown I would want to do and this is the Remand Bare Water Tint in Deepen Red. For winter seasons, people who are high contrast with a cooler undertone, this is perfect. And it isn't necessarily that this is drying, it's just that it doesn't provide any moisture and I like moisture, so I'm going to pop a little bit of a clear gloss over the top of this whole lip combo. 
time for this hair to come down, I think. There we go. And this is the finished look. It's a it's a good look. I just wanted to feel pretty and kind of like a bombshell. I needed to feel good today. So hopefully if you try this look, you like it. I'm going to go see how he's here perform. I love you all so much and I'll see you another time. Bye.